Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions. Where does an item drop in Torchlight Infinite? Maybe it's something like a precise skill or restraint. Where can I get that? Or maybe it's a question like, if I corrode this item, what will the Ember mod look like? Does it have a potential to brick where the effect completely inverts? Or is it just going to get better and I can corrode it risk-free? Now, a lot of the time, I don't actually have the answer to that question because it's not something that I've needed to know through my own personal gameplay. However, I do always know where you can find that answer. That is through the community tools. So today, I'm going to answer a lot of your questions by showing you three community tools for Torchlight Infinite that are absolutely critical to understanding the game on a deeper level. Whether you're looking for an efficient way to farm or you're just trying to make your build better, I absolutely suggest starting with these resources and then going from there and adapting as you play. First up, we have TLIDB. This is a database website powered by data mining, so it draws its information directly from the game. What this means is, in general, you can find a lot of stuff which you won't be able to find as easily through in-game menus. A good example of this is if you want to know what a legendary will corrode into, then in-game your only way to search is to look through the drop-down on the tradehouse, and that gets tedious very quickly. However, with TLIDB, you can come here, just hit Legendary Gear, and select your legendary from the list. It's also a much easier way to search as you can just put the name in here. Let's just say I got a dumb voice drop. And here we go. I have the item and I can immediately see everything that it will corrode into. So the crit strike rating per 500 evasion, it goes straight into crit strike rating per 500 evasion. The fizz added as lightning per 100 goes to fizz added as lightning per 700. Nothing really changes here. There's no inversion effects. On the other hand, let's say I wanted to look up a dragon fire armor. Now, there isn't actually dragon fire armor here, but I put in the word dragon and I got dragon breath armor. This is another helpful thing where if you don't quite know what the item is, it's often pretty easy to look it up. Furthermore, you can type in either the lower search window for something specific or the search window up here. Maybe I don't know what poisoned relief is, but I've heard people mention it. So let me put that in right now. There we go, poisoned relief, and it gives you a 30% injury buffer. If you want to know what injury buffer is, you just put that in, and there you go, delays a portion of incoming damage in the next four seconds. If you want a slightly more detailed explanation, I do suggest going in-game for things like that, as a lot of the items like injury buffer have the effect listed in the tooltip, so you won't have to click through or type anything extra. One very nice feature of TLIDB though is it also shows you all the legendary gear that happens to have the stat on it. So the Martyr Staff, which isn't actually a staff by the way, the Undercurrent and the Dangerous Dream are all sources of Injury Buffer. And you can even go here to see Delayed Pain, the Injury Buffer defensive skill. TLIDB is very helpful when you're making builds, because that way you'll get to know what leads to what and how to put things together. It's especially helpful if you just want to search a broad term and you don't quite know what you're looking for, but you know there's something there at least. Speaking of builds, if you want to put something together, I highly suggest stopping by Torchlight Infinite Helper. This also does function as a database somewhat similar to TLIDB, though I do find TLIDB a little bit easier to navigate. In addition though, it has the build feature, which currently is in beta. This is a way to share your build and then generate a URL. So let's say I put in a skill like Berserking Blade. I can put in some supports, like let's just say added fire damage, ailment termination, Berserk. Actually, I don't think Berserk can be supported. Never mind, it can't. At some point, I'm sure it will limit to only things that can be supported, but right now it really just is everything. Maybe curse. And just to finish it off, let's just do crit strike damage. There we go. I have Berserking Blade. I'm going to probably be on Rahan. I can always select my hero traits like this. One, two. Well, if I can click correctly. I can put in some supports for burst. Is any of this correct? Probably not. This is just an example. Maybe I want to be God of Might and I can select items here. In short, you get to put a build together. Then you just generate build URL and you can copy build URL. And if you put it right in, this will lead you right to the build that you created. Overall, this is a very good tool. However, it is a tool you should use with caution. It's great for sharing builds with your friends, but do be warned that if you copy a build just based on a planner, you're missing a lot of key information in understanding the interactions that make it actually work. You'll probably end up struggling to scale your damage at some point. 
I very much do not advise just taking a build that you find online and attempting to copy it. Use it as a source of inspiration and adapt it for your own needs. On the other hand, if you just want to run something by your friend, like, hey, this is where my build is, do you think it's actually a good idea to be using added fire damage here? Then this is a very good way to show your friend immediately without having to stream the game to them on Discord or otherwise mess with recording or anything like that. So while it is a very good tool, it's a tool that I strongly urge caution when using. Now, there is one other important tool that I want to get into. Before I do, though, a quick reminder that if you're finding this helpful, maybe you found a resource for Torchlight Infinite that you weren't aware of that's going to make your life way easier, then head down and give me a like, and while you're there, get subscribed, because I'm going to be releasing more content for Torchlight Infinite, other action RPGs, then even more. Or you can go check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I talk about a variety of gaming topics, including very soon, a video on my first impressions of Marvel Snap. Before I get back to things, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. But more about that at the end. For now, let's start talking about Torchkit GG, the new crafting tool for Torchlight Infinite. In many cases, it will be cheaper to buy it as a finished item, because someone made it, then they corroded it, they didn't hit what they wanted. So now they have something that they need to get rid of to hopefully get a bunch of their money back so that they can try again and hopefully hit the corrosion mod on the second go. So just as an example, maybe it's a strength helmet, maybe it's an old king's crown. It's going to be item level whatever you want. You just put this in. It's not implemented yet. It should be noted that Torchkit GG is still in a beta state. For now, just try to work around the limitations as I'm sure it's going to get better in the future. So you can select maximum life. You can select, say, this and just put it on automatically. This applies it to your item without going through the crafting process manually. Or, of course, you can click this and emulate the in-game crafting experience. I'm sure everyone's favorite thing to do is click embers hundreds, if not thousands of times, so this is going to be a very popular feature. Jokes about the amount of clicking aside, I do think it's good that this is a thing. And overall, you can see the craft calculator here that gets you an idea of how much it's going to cost to try to get the thing that you want. So if you're spamming, you might wonder, well, am I going to hit T3 life again? Looks like within about 0.24 flame elementium you will, so it's probably best to go over that. But if I spam a little bit more, let's see if I can hit something T2 or T1. Well, that's T2, but maybe it's not what I want. And maybe I'll try to hit something that I do actually want here. That's another T3. T2 maximum life. There we go. Well, this is significantly less likely to hit again. So if I have any budgetary constraints, I'm probably going to want to stop here rather than risking it and going for T1. And of course, the cost will go up the later in the crafting process you get. This is a great way to tutorialize crafting for yourself, learn, and make mistakes. Maybe you find out that actually it's worth using fossils, and you didn't realize exactly why they're so expensive. Or maybe you find out you've been using too many fossils, and it's not actually making your item better. Try to do all of these things here so that you don't end up wasting it later. Because as a note, even with these fossils, it's still going to cost an average of 256 flame elementium, to craft this with the spiral. I don't think the acute actually did anything. It's 100% chance regardless, because this is the first mod on the item. I just clicked it because it's a crafting simulator and you can do that. Of course, over here, you can go to the price settings. This is roughly an estimation of what things cost. These are the default values. You can change them to something manual if prices go up and down as they will often fluctuate. So next time you're wondering how to craft an item or next time you already roughly know how to craft an item, but you want to get some practice in going from A to B without making mistakes along the way, this is a great way to do it. You always have the option to apply or revert. So if I apply here, it saves the craft. And next up, maybe I want to add a soul burst ember. So I add that. You'll notice it tries to take off the life, so I don't want to apply. Doesn't try to take off the life. It does again. It really does like taking off life to give me cast speed here. But not for crit strike damage, so I can apply. Maybe I put on a Rivalry Ember. I guess this is where I'd, in theory, start using Acute Fossils. Maybe we're a Strength Stacker, so we're going to craft a little bit here. Strength and Dex, Strength and Int. We want Pure Strength. There we go. Ruling Ember for some more max life. Do note, this is all just me clicking stuff for the sake of demonstration. It's purely theoretical. And if you do like watching me click stuff for the sake of demonstration in purely theoretical instances, well, I have a whole detailed crafting guide that might be right up your alley. Finish it with any old mod. Just put 
let's just say a suffix on. So apply, take that off, craft, apply. Now I want to put a restless suffix on replacing this. And so I'll do that. I don't need either of these. They won't really matter. I don't want to replace the crit damage. So I need to keep going. And there we go. And that is my theoretical helmet made with this tool. Like with many things, these community tools are going to get better over time. What right now might be a little bit of a clunky interface is going to get streamlined with repeated use and future updates. And the information itself is going to be great as well. So if you ever have a question about how to do something, try consulting one of these community tools first. And if you still have a question, then there's a couple options. First, you can hop into the official Discord and ask there. They have a questions channel. There's lots of people who are super helpful. Or you can join my personal Discord, react to give yourself a community role, and then hop into a Torchlight Infinite channel and ask your question there. Again, there's tons of super helpful people, many of whom very well might have the answer. But I have a question. Are there any other really good community tools or resources for Torchlight Infinite that you found that I didn't talk about? Please be sure to mention them down below. And who knows, I might even add them to a pinned comment to kind of put everything in one place for people. There's also a pinned comment in my Discord with a lot of these resource links. For now though, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And of course, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Or again, you can support completely for free just by liking the video, letting me know your thoughts in a comment, and of course, getting subscribed. If you want to watch something else, maybe that crafting guide I mentioned, it'll be in the card right now, up at the top right. Or on screen right now, there's going to be a video related to this one that YouTube's recommending that you watch.